Well, hello, and welcome again to another session of uh, Digital Slide Review and Sign Out. I'm Dr. Lewis Hassel, uh, telecommuting and coming to you today from home, uh, but uh, still a product of the uh, collaboration of the Digital Anatomic Pathology Academy, the Digital Pathology Association, and uh, the University of Oklahoma Health Sciences Center helps uh, to uh, keep me out of debt. So our case today again comes again from the case files of the Stevenson Oklahoma Cancer Center. It's that of a 45-year-old woman who uh, presented with a vaginal mass. Uh, some irritation and bleeding uh, had been noted. Um, when she came to the gynecologist, uh, they found a uh, several uh, centimeter elevated uh, uh, mass that appeared to be ulcerated and uh, therefore required uh, some, some reasonable surgery to uh, excise it. Um, and uh, we were fortunate to receive this nice uh, specimen, which you can see at low power shows uh, squamous uh, mucosa here. And then the beginnings of a tumor with some apparent ulceration. It's somewhat fragmented here. And obviously it goes clear to the depth of the biopsy in uh, several of the fragments, uh, both here and here. So um, we'll take a little closer look at uh, what we may be dealing with here. Uh, first of all, examining closely the margin here between uh, the normal uh, epithelium and uh, the neoplasm. And we don't see too much in terms of transition. We don't see any surface dysplasia here. We see inflammation and so forth. Um, and then we move right into this uh, very uh, blue um, tumor that doesn't seem to be uh, forming glands or keratin or anything of that sort. Um, it has a sort of a purplish amphiphilic uh, cytoplasm um, and a fair bit of nuclear atypia that we can see here. Uh, we can see some single cell necrosis and in a few cells, some prominent nucleoli. So that's uh, certainly concerning for a very high grade uh, malignancy. We can see that we have very broad-based surface ulceration uh, as well in several of these fragments. We'll look at this piece as well and see if uh, there's anything further here that can be instructive uh, for us. Um, as we can see, <clears throat> we have a similar appearance here. Uh, again, a lot of uh, single cell necrosis and pleomorphism to the nuclei. Uh, Maybe a little brown stuff here in some of the stroma, but not very prominent. Um, and we see there's a very uh, significant mitotic rate, as we'd expect in a high-grade tumor like that. Here's at least three or four in one uh, portion of a microscopic field, uh, far less than a millimeter. So this is going to have a fairly high mitotic rate. So what do we do with a, a essentially an undifferentiated tumor of this sort? Let's look again at this margin over here and see if we have any sort of uh, in situ lesion to maybe help us with a little bit. And maybe we can imagine that there's a little bit of something in here, but not very pronounced. Uh, nothing to suggest that this has an intraepidermal component uh, from the sections that we have here. Um, Immunohistochemistry, of course, is going to be helpful for us uh, in this particular case. Um, and uh, as that was performed, uh, this was discovered to have uh, melanocytic markers um, and therefore uh, and to have negative uh, squamous or other uh, glandular or PAX8 uh, type markers. There was no known primary tumor for this uh, patient. Uh, and so even though we don't see an in situ component here, it's presumptive that this is a, a malignant melanoma arising from the mucosa. So this is an unusual uh, uh, scenario, but mucosal melanomas are described and are slightly more frequent in Caucasians. Generally, this is a disease of women who are uh, above 50. Um, the prognostic factors in terms of outcome are relatively similar to that of cutaneous uh, melanomas, but the causative factors are probably quite different. And uh, because of that, uh, the molecular uh, signatures of these lesions can also be somewhat different. 
Uh, however, at present, uh, we would report uh, fairly standard uh, uh, parameters uh, to include depth of invasion uh, using both Clark's uh, and Breslow's depth. Uh, the Clark depth is somewhat challenging in a uh, mucosal site because you don't have a, a conventional papillary dermis. Um, you have a submucosa and so forth. So in general, the Breslow depth is more uh, reliable and uh, uh, easy to uh, ascertain. Uh, the histologic type, uh, sometimes these are uh, felt to arise from mucosal uh, lentiginous uh, melanomas, uh, although in, as in our current case, uh, it's indeterminate because it's entirely uh, vertical growth phase. There's no uh, radial growth phase that's identified. Uh, and of course, uh, factors like uh, lymphovascular invasion, perineural invasion, and the size of nerves that are involved, presence or absence of tumor infiltrating uh, lymphocytes, presence of satellite lesions adjacent to, distant from, beneath, uh, presence of ulceration, and finally, the margin status are, are going to be important uh, prognostic uh, factors. Uh, as I mentioned, the uh, immunohistochemistry uh, is uh, significant that these are positive for melanocytic markers as expected. We could add HMB45 and several others to this positive list. And they're generally going to be negative for uh, pancytokeratin or squamous markers like CK56, P40, P63. With CK, you have to be a little bit careful because you can have some uh, positive uptake uh, within the tumor. Uh, I think a tumor like this uh, also could raise concern for a, a poorly differentiated uh, muscular tumor, a rhabdomyosarcoma or something like that. And uh, occasionally you, you may want to include myogenic markers in your differential. Uh, of course, in our day with uh, more targeted therapies available, the molecular analysis is going to be very important. Uh, and so uh, you may want to include kit mutations, NRAS, uh, as well as the more typical BRAF uh, V600E evaluation, um, as these may uh, provide some uh, therapy therapeutic uh, options that uh, would not otherwise be available. While immunotherapy is used uh, quite uh, widely in uh, these uh, lesions, um, PDL1 testing is not uh, routine at present, um, is not uh, strictly associated with responsiveness uh, to uh, immunotherapy in uh, each of these lesions. In terms of sites that can be involved with mucosal melanomas, we've obviously seen uh, the vagina to be involved in this case, uh, but other areas of the vulva can be involved. Uh, rarely, of course, uh, uh, enteric sites. The anus, of course, is another site. Um, and uh, also in the uh, uh, urethral uh, portion of the uh, uh, um, urogenital tract, you can see this as well. And here's a nice example of that. Uh, we can see here a squamous uh, and uh, to some degree, uh, slightly transitional type of epithelium uh, with, uh, again, this uh, uh, small blue ulcerated uh, tumor um, that has, uh, uh, in this case, uh, the presence of some pigmentation, which uh, vastly uh, facilitates the, the diagnosis in this case. And again, we can see these uh, pleomorphic cells with high mitotic rate um, and occasionally prominent uh, nucleoli uh, in the infiltrative cells, not forming glands, having these sort of vaguely nested and uh, pale cytoplasm, uh, unlike our case, which did not have the, quite the same pale cytoplasmic change. Uh, we can look around a little bit more at this and, and see a, again that in this case, uh, there does seem to be um, a nice in situ component here uh, which would be nice to demonstrate and show that it does have an a radial growth phase as well as a, obviously some upward migration of the tumor here. So that's uh, certainly worth uh, taking a look at. And as usual, I'll post the link for these uh, slides so that if you'd like to come back later and uh, look at them at your own leisure, uh, on your own uh, monitor and see uh, how these uh, changes come together, uh, you can uh, of course do that. So uh, our final sign out today is uh, malignant melanoma of the vagina, uh, deeply invasive, uh, nodular or vertically grow growing phase, high mitotic rate, uh, surface ulceration, uh, no uh, lateral growth phase and uh, no perineural or uh, lymphovascular space invasion seen. 
uh, but certainly uh, based on the size and thickness of several millimeters in size, uh, does not portend a uh, bright uh, future. Uh, Thank you for joining me. I hope that uh, you'll uh, respond and uh, share this with others, like it, subscribe so you won't miss future uh, editions of uh, our offering. And uh, we'll look forward to seeing you again uh, sometime soon.